It is up. Okay, I've got one hell of a traumatic story that has just. Oh man, this experience, it raked its claws over my brain, through my memories. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, give some background. Um, when I was a teenager, I got expelled for selling drugs from one of my schools. Um, they only caught me selling pot, but I was selling cocaine and MDMA at the time. That's another story as well. I was actually doing quite well, um, when that happened. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they caught me selling pot. Um, they expelled me, and, uh, I don't know. The word went out. Uh, I was, I was banned from any other school except for two schools and um, ultimately I ended up going to one that was I like to call it boot camp it's essentially outdoor ed and uh, it was it's this kind of like it's it was scared straight but not in the sense of like you know the TV show where taking you to like see cons and have them scream at you and just, it, like, yeah, you know, just, just rattle your bones with their scary, psychotic, rapey nature. No, it was scary straight by, like, putting you in the wilderness with really crappy equipment and climates and trains that you are definitely not equipped to handle and go and do the best you can. Um, <laughs> I can remember the first trip we did was uh snowshoeing i mean it was only uh, i believe six days but um since all the other kids were too lazy just me and one kid had to break trail like with uh, essentially stomp down six feet of snow for 11 miles and, and back again um yeah it was exhausting and uh like we had to dig out these ditches in the snow to put our tents in and uh i remember on the last night the the trench we we dug just uh, this little foxhole type thing just avalanched in on me, my partner and uh we were just so exhausted at that point that we didn't care we just like rolled up into a fetal position and tried to get back like back to sleep because yeah there wasn't much sleep to be had on these trips but, uh, yeah, this did nothing to prepare me for the horror, the horror, the insanity that was, um, the West Coast Trail, which is actually a very nice trail. It's something I would love to do again on my own terms, and when the weather is not absolute just piss, because it was raining 95% of the time we were on this trail, it was like... You know, just, just, just the end of winter. So, where I live, that means fucking rain all the goddamn time. Um, and this was, uh, it was, I believe, 13 miles. And we started off on um, the more difficult end, uh, where there's a lot of routes you had to climb and stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, needless to say, it did not start out well, like, um, the group of kids I was with, I absolutely despised them, um, and, uh, they quickly did this whole tribal follow the loudest leader thing where they were following this kid who's this complete jackass, I think he's a jackass to this day, and I never want to spend another second around him, um, and, uh, I just kind of sh just swallowed my tongue for the trip, listened to this guy just beacon off all the goddamn time. And, um, like, I squirreled away a couple packs of smokes because, you know, obviously we weren't, weren't allowed to bring stuff like cigarettes on the trip. And, uh, you know, what What do they do? First first day, they go in my bag and fucking steal. And, um, like, I, I just freaked out and I fucking yelled at all of them. I had to be very, like, <laughs> I had to be very, like, inexplicit about 
what I was yelling at them about in front of everyone because I didn't want to get in trouble. But, um, yeah, and needless to say, pretty disastrous. We all got trench foot at the end of it because of all the rain. And also, someone had uh, essentially had the same pair of boots that I bought for this trip. And um, they were three sizes smaller than me. And they took one of my, my boots, I believe it was my left one, and left theirs. So I had a boot that was three sizes too small on one foot. And then two days in, we're drying off our boots by the fire. And someone just, just thinks, thought it would be funny to push my boot into the fire. The one that's like the correct size for me. So I got burnt, had all these holes in it. So I like that foot was getting just rained out to the max for the entire trip. And, um, about five days in, like, um, you know, we were, we were crying like little babies at this point, and someone had stole this mushroom chocolate my, my girl had made for me at the time, and that really pissed me off, and I yelled at them again, I called them a bunch of fucking bottom feeders, oh man, I was fired up, but, um, and the next day, um, uh, I was like, like, my buddy uh, on this trip was like, I knew him prior to going into the program. He was the only one I really knew uh, going in. But um, we had this huge blowout. All the kids, I mean, like, we were like, ah, screw this. You guys are going too slow. We want to get out of here. It's been five days. We're only six miles in. Uh, we're going to go on our own terms. We got our food. We got our tents. Switch, screw you, fucking counselors. We don't need you. And so, marched off, and uh, I just kind of followed along. And then, you know, gradually, after a couple hours, the kids just start dropping out. And I'm like, you know, screw this. It's a, you know, weak. They got no backbone. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it was just me and my buddy and one other kid by the time. Like, it was, like, really, really starting to rain. And, uh, like, just ridiculous amounts of rain. And, uh, like, my buddy, he starts, like, like, I remember his eyes got really big like that. And he was just kind of, like, he started walking kind of like he was just a little drunk. And um, I was like, dude, are you good? And he was just like, oh, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I'm, like, like really, like, heating up or something. So he starts doing people with hypothermia do which is, uh, you know, the paradoxical undressing, like, he's, he's, like, down to just his thermal shirt, and, um, like, it is just, it's, you know, as I said, it's the end of winter, it's pissing rain, it's, it's cold, it's really bloody cold out, and, uh, we're just, I see on the map, there's this, like, native reserve, and so, like, we're gonna go there, and we're gonna sort out whatever the hell's going on with you. And at this point, like, he's starting to, like, really, like, delirium setting in. It's like, oh, man, his face, his face is everywhere, and the trees, and all. I was like, faces? What are you talking about? And he's like, he's like, they look like, 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 totem poles, man, faces. Like, my friend was a young native from a native family and all this stuff, and, like, he was, he starts talking about, like, uh, you know, very since from native mythology, uh, like, and I'm pretty well acquainted with native mythology. I went to a native elementary school, but I had no idea what he was talking about. Um, he may have just been babbling for a lot of them. And I kind of, I was focused on getting to a populated area. And so, like, uh, we're hiking, 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 and we get to this, like, large beach uh, that is apparently the only thing between us and this reserve. And so, um, my buddy, he's just, like, babbling nonsensically at this point. He can't even get up and walk. So I take out my tent, and I, I wrap him up in it, and I get the other guy, I'm like, stay with him, do your best to keep him warm, like, don't rub his, like, extremities if you have to. Um, it was way too wet to make a fire. Um, so, uh, I, I was like, I'm gonna go over there and try to get help. And so... I ran across this beach, and it was so hard to run across because the sand was wet. So I was, you know, step, sink, step, sink, step, sink. But I was just 
fuck at it, like, no! Ah, I don't want my friend to die, don't let him die, please! Um, and I was just filled with this. Independent, like, primal, intuitive sense of someone is going to die today. I, like, I've never felt anything like that before. Um, or since, really, um, uh, like, I've definitely felt danger, I mean, especially living on the streets, but, like, nothing that was like, this is going to happen without a doubt. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I get to this reserve, and it was the creepiest thing ever. There was no one there, but, uh, there's all these, like, really mangy, greasy hawks. Like, a ton of hawks. They're all black. And like just greasy looking, shabby looking. They're all just staring at me. And they're like just peppering this area on top of the houses, the trees. And I'm like going from house to house. And it was so weird because it looked like these houses were occupied. Like people had literally just walked out the door. Um, but there's no one there anywhere. And I'm like running around, no, no, please don't let him die. And so, uh, like, eventually you know, I realized, yeah, there's no one there. Like, we're screwed. Like, maybe I can get him over into one of these houses so he's at least out of the rain. So, okay, I, I run back. <laughs> yeah, shoes hitting the sand, sinking, hitting the sand, sinking, and just screaming into the void. <laughs> um, yeah, like, oh god, it's like yeah, screaming, crying, just, just fluctuating back and forth from the two, um, and, uh, yeah, like, I, I get back, and the camp counselors, they, I guess, caught up with, with my buddy and, uh, my, the, the other dude who was with me, and, um, they had my buddy in a tent, and they had warm water bottles under his armpits, they had him, you know, like, he was, he was taken care of, um, which is good. Like uh, said, if it was any longer, it could have been, you know, potentially dangerous. Um, but I remember seeing him in the tent, and he's just like, Faces! Faces! What do you want, Faces? And, uh, and, like, he was pretty far gone, and I asked him the next day when he came out of it, um, about what he experienced. He has no idea, he can't remember any of it, so he blacked out for the entire thing. Like, when he started babbling, that was kind of when he, he blacked out. Um, he said he, he had weird dreams, though, um, about uh, tribal faces, um, and, uh, yeah, so he experienced, like, full-on delirium, and, uh, so luckily no one died that day, but he, he could have been very close, like, and, you know, it was very stupid of us to take off like that, yeah, <laughs> We were desperate, man. We were desperate. We wanted to go home so bad. Oh, God. Um, like, by the end of this trip, man, like, me and my partner, because we are supposed to be partners of three, and one of the kids bailed, and he also did the very smart thing of, like, leaving our food, and, um, like, there's all veggies and stuff that he had just out in the open, for the weekend before we left, so it was all fucking rotten by the time we left. Um, so we lost a bunch of that, and then we had to carry all our gear as well, like three people's worth of gear um, between the two of us, and me and my partner were just eating. Um, like, we had some bagel crumbs and uh, and, just some, and some Nutella, and we were like, scraping the bottom of this Nutella jar with the bagel and crumbs. That's what we were eating for the last few days. Um, this camp leader is like, no, you gotta be independent and you're just pretty so, I really don't care if you start to death, and that kind of thing, you know? Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it took us 13 days for, um, I believe it was an 11 or 13 mile trip. Like, it wasn't that long of a trip. Um, just because of all the, like, hissy fits and drama and counselors making us stop to do 50 push-ups every time someone swore, which was a lot because we were pissed off. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it was, it, it, it was pretty, overall pretty terrible to the point of being traumatizing. Um, and on top of all that, 
when we got that, someone just fucking nice, nice, considerate, you know, passerby, good Samaritan decides to slash the tires of the van we were supposed to leave in. So we spent another two days counting on the parking lot, just drenched our tents, everything drenched, trying to keep the rain out of our tents, so goddamn hungry. Oh man, when we finally got out of there, and we got on the ferry, and I had a burger, and then went and bummed a smoke off someone on the balcony, or on the you know, top of the ferry, and there's a little smoking area, um, <clears throat> deck to the ferry, whatever. <clears throat> God damn, that felt like, <clears throat> like, I'm Canadian, but that felt like an American moment. <laughs> like, oh God, civilization, thank you, civilization, for these presents you have bequeathed upon me. I have a full stomach. I'm warm again. Oh God, I'm having a victory cigarette. Western's best, <laughs> but uh, like, <clears throat> like I legitimately that was that was probably I've, I've, I don't, me appreciating civilization <laughs> more than I ever have before. Um, but yeah, that was uh, <clears throat> that was a nightmare. That was a fucking nightmare. <clears throat> I mean, as I said. I would, I would uh, do this again. I would do the West Coast Trail again because it is a beautiful trail when it's not cloudy, foggy, and just moist everywhere, 99% of the time. <clears throat> like we got maybe like one day where it was sunny, which was actually kind of nice because um, uh, it was when we were going around the crest of the trail and so we were on the beach and we're looking out over the ocean, and the ocean goes on and on and on, because it's nothing but beef sea, and then ocean, 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 Japan, all the way over there. And it's not like you could see Japan, but what we could see was a ton of litter from Japanese products and Russian products, because there's a lot of Russian uh, ships that went through them. Um, and then, you know, this was not long after Fukushima as well, um, and, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of Russian products got carried out onto the, uh, the, the beach. And, like, I remember we actually found, like, a little bottle of some vodka in it. And one of the kids was stupid enough to drink it because he was that desperate to get fucked up. And it was, like, half seawater and he was just puking. <laughs> I, was I told him not to do it. Um, but, and it's, you live with the consequences, I guess. But, um, I mean... This was like like that feeling I described of like imminent death. That's one of the most haunting sensations I've ever experienced. Um, again, never experienced anything like it since. Um, I think it was yeah, like really unlocking something very primal in me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad no one did die. Um, but yeah, this was not fun by any stretch. <laughs> like. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think, as I said, it would be fun on my own terms, you know, if I was to, uh, if I could ingest nicotine, if I could bring some weed with me, if I could do it without a counselor breathing down my back about to give me 50 push-ups for going, oh, motherfucker, my boot's full of water again. But yeah, I mean, like, as I said, we got trench foot. Trench foot from that, like, it's brutal. Like, that's like a nasty infection. It's like, uh, it's like a uh, athlete's foot, but a lot worse. Like, you can see, like, the fungus and stuff on the, on the soles of your feet, and we all got it. Ugh. Needless to say, I don't necessarily endorse these programs as a result of that. But, get this, this very program is now actually very popular in my province, and they've got like three facilities last time I checked, maybe even more. Um, so they're going to be traumatizing kids left and right. I mean, I met tons of kids who were just leaving the program or came to visit, and they were like, yeah, no, this this, this sucked. I, I literally like cried. I wanted to wipe myself. I was so scared. Like, it's just, yeah, not, not, not a good time by my books.
Um, but yeah, I wanted to share that because it was a pretty traumatizing ordeal. Um, and yeah, just pretty crazy all around. Anyways, you all have a good one. You know, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Please, I'd appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.